traveling to another dimension. A dimension not only of plants and soil, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land of gardening which borders that of imagination. There's a signpost up ahead. Your next stop, the Sustainability Zone. Hey, that was pretty fun at the Green Gardener uh, graduation last night, was, wasn't he? it? Yeah, because we get to teach them, and then they... Yeah, uh, just seeing them all come along. Say, uh, so you're still wearing the same clothes to do the gardening. Too. Yeah, I thought I'd keep it, you know, it's better to look good than to feel good. Yeah, I guess. Well, if you're going to look good, why don't you turn your collar down at least, huh? Well, thank you, you. That's better. A new page is about to be turned in the history of the Garden Wise Guys. Owen and Billy are about to embark on a journey into the world of garden maintenance. They'll show you how to properly prune your plants, how to deal with common pests, and how to manage your irrigation system. It's garden care that's as boundless as space and as timeless as infinity. Whether they know it or not, Owen and Billy are now on a highway that leads straight into the heart of the sustainability zone. Say, listen, it's been pretty hot. I think we should go check the irrigation timer, maybe make a couple adjustments. What do you think? I think that makes sense. Yeah, let's go. Okay, I say about 20% increase. No, no, 30%. 20. 30%. It's I'm going, telling go, you. Look, I'm going with like, 20. No, I'm no. going to hit the button. Whoa, what's going on? Whoa, what, what happened? I, I don't know. What but is this clock? What did you do? I don't know. This isn't what. This isn't the one from our garden. No, it looks like 1957. Yeah, it's like you know some time warp. Hey, sort where of thing. are we anyway? I don't know. Let's this get out of here. Strange place. Where, where are we? This is so weird. Looks like somebody's been using some really old school maintenance techniques here. Not exactly a poster child for sustainability, is it? I'll say, what a mess. Hey. Oh. Hey, who are you and what are you doing here? Uh, I'm Owen Dell, uh, County Landscape and Design. I'm Vernon. You can call me Vern. Vern, I'm Billy Goodnick with City of Santa Barbara Parks and Recreation. This is your garden? Yeah, Billy, it's mine. Yeah. We're, uh, we're the Garden Wise Guys. We have a television show on sustainable landscaping. My neighbor has a TV. <laughs> are you guys on right after I Love Lucy? Uh, no, not exactly. No, I'm not sure what uh, the... I'm saving up to get me my own TV set. Our show is uh, about sustainable landscaping. It teaches people how to create gardens that are beautiful, gardens that are functional, and gardens that are sustainable, you know, easy on the environment. Hey, maybe you guys could give me some advice on my yard. I planted it. It looked beautiful. It was growing. Now it's all overgrown and a little bit. Hey, I need some help. Oh, Ooh, you know, yeah. Some of my plants just even died. Well, you know, it's probably because you're not following the, some of the simple principles of sustainable landscaping. You keep saying that word, uh, sustainable? What is that? It's plants that thrive on natural rainfall, things that don't need a lot of pruning and reducing uh, toxic chemicals in your garden. Think of a sustainable landscape as a natural system that doesn't need much help from humans. We try to use resources efficiently and to tread lightly. It's just that simple. I'm going to take a whack at this purple flowering plant over here and see if I can't make it into a nice round ball. <laughs> uh, better let me help you with that, Vern. Hey, while you guys do that, I'm going to take a shot at the Griswold 240, see if I can get us back. Good idea. Come on over Let's here. Let's go. Oh, hold it, Vern. Just a minute. Uh, we don't actually use hedge clippers for a plant like this. We use pruning shears. And the reason is that a hardy perennial like this Mexican sage is kind of brutal, but it really needs to be cut all the way back to the ground at least once a year. What that does is it gets rid of all the old growth, and the fresh growth that comes on will push out beautiful new flowers, freshens everything up. Let me show you. See, here's what you want to do, Vern. Take this all the way to the ground. Golly! Why don't you try it, and uh, I'll go see what Billy's doing. This is my lucky day. <laughs> All right. So Owen just showed you how to take a plant completely to the ground. That's great for the perennials, but with a shrubby plant like this uh, or some other flowering plants, what we're doing is deadheading. It has nothing to do with Jerry Garcia. We use pruners again, not hedge trimmers. And the idea here is just to remove the part of the plant that has the, the spent flower, the part that doesn't look good anymore. And we're just going to cut just under the outline of the plant so that the new growth will come out and fill in the outline of the plant. So this is all we really need to take out. If you still have to reduce the size of the plant a little bit, you just do it here and there and maybe do it every few years so that the plant is gradually getting smaller, but we're not just cutting back into little stubs. Uh, 
generally no more than a third of the plant ever comes off at one time. A lot of plants look pretty good on the outside, like the citrus here. But when you really reveal what's going on inside, you can see there are an awful lot of problems. And this leads to one of the key points of pruning woody plants, which is that you prune from the inside out. And you prune for structure, not for size. Let me show you a few things. First of all, this is usually the only tool you need. We don't need saws, axes, chainsaws, or any of that, because if you're pruning properly, you're just taking little bits out. Now, this hasn't been touched in a while. There are two basic things that I'm going to do. One is I'm going to take away some of the dead material, like this old growth here, and I'm going to cut right down to the parent branch. The second thing I'm going to do is if I find any crossing branches where one branch grows over another, I'm going to cut one out so that they don't rub and um, open up uh, basically a wound in the plant that's susceptible to pathogen. Takes a few minutes, but really in very little time you'll find that you have a much more attractive and much healthier plant. Well, that ought to about do it for this section. It looks a lot better, doesn't it? And you know, it's not just about looks, it's about the health of the plant. When you prune from the inside out, you get better air circulation, and the plant is just a whole lot happier. Works really well. Hey. Hey, Billy. That's uh, quite a nice job there. Oh, thank you. Uh, have, have pruners will travel, you know, right, think, time travel, that is. I think Vern will appreciate it. Yeah. Hey, what's that? Oh, oh sounds like a gas mower. Great. Would you like this? to meet us? Hey, Vern. What's going on? Well, Owen, I just got this great gas-powered lawnmower here, and I'm going to retire that old push mower of mine. You're going to go modern, huh? You betcha. Well, well you're you know, actually, Vern, uh, I found the dumpster, a push mower. Uh, yeah, hey, listen, uh, Vern and I were just talking about oh, that. He's, oh, he's got the gas mower. You know, he's, yeah. gas mowers, a lot of those where we're from, but uh, first of all, price of oil price of gas, you know, that, that's kind of a no-no. Also, they pollute, they make a lot of noise, they're kind of rough on the neighbors, and besides, you know, I think we could all use a little uh, exercise pushing these around the lawn. <laughs> Not that you need it. What are you trying to say? These seeds are great. Let me help you, boys. Hey, Vern. trash day, we'll get this taken out to the curb. Uh, uh, Vern. This isn't garbage. I know you used to probably haul this stuff out and it goes out to, to the landfill. What we like to do with this stuff is just compost it, break it down, use it. Yeah, see, Vern, this stuff is, is not trash. It's, um, it's valuable nutrients that are locked up in the plant. And this is the stuff that you fertilize to make the plant grow. And when you throw it away, you throw away the best part of the garden in some ways. We're going to break it down into compost and return it right back to the garden so you don't have to fertilize it. Exactly. Much. This it is all good great. stuff. Well, hey, we, we better get the grass picked up anyway. You know, I forgot to put the bag on the mower. You know, you don't even have to pick up the grass clippings. Uh, in fact, it, you know, later on in, in our time, there's uh, things called mulching mowers. They just tear everything up, and it, little tiny pieces go back in the lawn. Then they break down, they become compost too. But you can just leave these clippings, you know, just mow frequently, leave a little bit out here. Just goes right back in the soil, freshens your lawn. You don't need all those, you know, bags of uh, chemicals and stuff to put on the lawn. Yeah. So, I guess they're not going to be needing a trash can. Nope. Hey, Vern, what you doing? I'm trying to kill these aphids in this Ooh. citrus tree. Ah. <clears throat> you know, Vern, there's a better way to do this. Uh, you want to tell me about it, Bill? Well, you know, there's the whole IPM approach. Isn't that, uh, they make typewriters and business machines, don't they? No, IPM stands for Integrated Pest Management. The idea is that you start slow and you work your way up. You don't pull out the uh, artillery when all you actually need is a little pea shooter. So you start with the most benign methods of treating pests and gradually work your way up if that's even needed. Let me give you an example. You've got an aphid problem, right? You know, one of the first things you can do is just simply ignore the problem and quite possibly a predator will come in and eat the aphids and then you don't have to worry about it anymore. If that doesn't work, you can take a hose give them a good bath, knock them off the plant, and a lot of times that will put an end to the infestation. You can knock them down with an insecticidal soap, which is a very non-toxic method. And as a last resort, probably not with the citrus tree, but with other plants that are chronically getting problems, just take the plant out and replace it with something else. IPM, Integrated Pest Management. So how about I trade you this hose with a nozzle for this uh, toxic mix that you have here? Another problem that we've had in our area in the last couple of decades has been a thing called the giant whitefly. Uh, it comes in and attacks the undersides of leaves of things like hibiscus and this giant bird of paradise. You can actually see here 
these concentric rings, which are the eggs. When these hatch, the adults form a huge tuft of hairy material, kind of like a, a white beard or a goatee. For a long time, people didn't know what to do about this problem. And then somebody discovered that you could actually use worm compost as a mulch. You can buy worm compost in a nursery in a bag like this. It's very inexpensive. You spread it around the root zone of the plant. It goes up into the plant and seems to take care of the problem. It's inexpensive, it's easy, and it's very sustainable. You can also try just simply washing the white flies off of the backside of the leaves, and sometimes that takes care of it too. Back in uh, Vern's time here, probably his attitude is the only good insect is a dead insect. But as Owen was talking about uh, natural predators and things like that, one of the things we're looking for are uh, predatory insects or beneficial insects. They'll often eat the ones that you don't want to have in the garden. So uh, having some diversity in your garden, having a variety of plants that might attract them is a great thing to, to look for. Uh, this lavender here is a great plant and it's also a fabulous ornamental, uh, but a lot of the good guys like it. You'll see them riding in with their little white hats and the bad guys go riding off with their black hats. Uh, you can also just go out and purchase ladybugs like this little container here, or lacewings can be released in your garden. They're actually better than ladybugs are. So the basic point is to try to strike a natural balance, have enough plants that the good guys are there, bad guys are getting eaten up, and uh, lay off the pesticides. Okay, you ready for your freedom? Here we go, this should be exciting. Okay, let's talk about slugs and snails. Pretty much everybody has a problem with them. Part of that is because people plant things like agapanthus and other juicy plants that they really like to go into and hide out in. So if you can get rid of slug and snail attracting plants, you're part of the way there. Um, the other thing is that wild animals like raccoons, skunks, and possums will come through every night, clean up the yard, eat all the snails. They do a very, very good job of it. So those, those animals are actually your friends. There are some other neat hardware things too. There's copper tape, which the slugs don't like to crawl over, so you can put this around the trunks of your trees, put it around pots, or even around a flower bed, and they will not climb over this. Another one is a snail killer that actually turns into a fertilizer in its breakdown products. It's completely non-toxic, unless you happen to be a snail or a slug, and it works actually quite well. And then the old standby, beer. What you do with beer is uh, simple. You find an opener that works. There we go. You take a pie pan, a saucer, you bury it so that it's flush with the ground, and you pour a little beer in. By the way, you might wonder why we're in a chicken coop. Well, these girls can take care of the snail and slug problem too. They love to eat them, and if you let them out in their yard, they'll clean the place up in a hurry. Right, girls? Uh-uh, no beer. You're under 21. Johnny, be good. Take advantage of Santa Barbara's picturesque parks and beaches for your wedding or special event. Our affordable and attractive outdoor locations can accommodate from 10 to 300 people and offer a wide range of amenities to fit your wedding and party needs. Chase Palm Park, Alice Keck Park Memorial Garden, and the Mission Rose Garden are just three of 15 outdoor venues available to rent from city parks and recreation. For more information and reservations, call 805-564-5418. Every morning at 8 a.m., Dave's lawn sprinklers turn on. Dave likes knowing that no matter what, his lawn is getting watered. So is the left side of his driveway. Jake Walter's bike. The curb running downhill on Garden Street. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, Dave also waters the Browns' dachshund. <laughs> There's a Dave in every neighborhood. Log on to sbwater.org to learn the best settings for your sprinklers. Burr! 
fern, 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 fern. What are you, what are you doing? Oh, just giving my plants a little drink of water. I, I do it every day. Every day? Well, pretty much. Vern, you know, the kinds of plants you have in your yard, they don't need water every day. Besides, we live in a dry climate and we try to conserve our water for droughts and dry periods. And you know what else, Vern? When you save water, you save money. Right, Billy? That's right. Listen, we saw some sprinklers that look like they need a little adjustment, a little repair. You want to come with us? We'll show you how to tweak them a little bit. Oh, looks like a garden wise geyser. I'm going to go turn off the water. Owen, see what you can do. Uh, we can uh, take, a, take a look at this. This is pretty common, Vern. Uh, what it usually happens is the head gets knocked off with a lawnmower or something, a little nozzle in there. Mm -hmm. well, in fact, here it is right here. Look, hey. it just got blown right off to there. That's the nozzle, and that's a little filter basket that goes underneath it. You clean them off, thread it back on, and you're done. That's not so hard. But I also noticed this head is pretty deep. In fact, it's not. you can't even see it from here. These want to be up closer to the surface of the lawn area. So. We'd have to raise that up, which is a little bit more of a job. Owen, oh, look what I found. Oh, well, there you go. See, this is uh, not only a replacement head, and make sure if you replace the entire head, it exactly matches the one that you're replacing. Otherwise, it'll throw the pattern off. But what this is is a swing joint, and that allows you to connect this to the lateral line down below the ground and raise this to exactly the height you want. You can adjust it over time. So uh, this is the way to go. I saw some other problems uh, in another part, so maybe we should look at those first. Billy, you know, that doesn't look like a 50s head to me. No, it doesn't. Okay, here's a really common problem. You see this all the time. The sprinkler head is popped up. There's nothing coming out of it. Usually what's happened, if you're lucky, is that the little adjustment screw that's in the center of the head has, for some reason, come out of adjustment, and it's blocking off the water. It controls the flow of water through the head. So if we're lucky, we can open it up and restore the flow. But unfortunately, we're not lucky this time. It's all the way open. So there must be some dirt plugging up the head. Let's go ahead and turn the water off, take the nozzle off, and see what's going on down there. All right, here's what you do. You raise this baby up, and all you do is unscrew this. That's the nozzle. Put that up here on the rock. And then we try to get the little filter basket out here which is not so easy to do. Boy, I could really use a paper clip here or something. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Wow, look at that. And then it'll come right out. There's probably some dirt or junk in here. And if we can't get it cleaned out, then we just replace the nozzle. And again, make sure that you replace it with exactly the same nozzle in terms of flow rate and angle that you had in there in the beginning. And when you do this, it's real easy to get dirt sucked down in there and start the problem all over again. So cleanliness is very important. If you have to dig out around the head a little bit to get the mud away from it, that's kosher. Okay, well, it looks like we're back in business here. A five-minute investment in sprinkler repair can keep your lawn looking healthy and keep the whole system rolling properly. Okay, now, Vern, here's a little something people often miss. you got an a irrigation head here that's watering the shrubs, and when you first put it in and the shrubs were little, this probably made sense, but now what you're doing is throwing into the ones in the front and you're not getting good distribution to the back. So what you got to do is raise these up as the shrubs get taller so you're throwing over them. This is uh, a device that works really well. This is a, a riser that you can start adding to it. They come in all different lengths, but the nice thing is when you find just the right height for it, you can just uh, take a piece of this right here and just snip it off and make this a little bit shorter so you can adjust the height to whatever you want. The main idea here is to get the heads up higher than the plant material in front of it so you can throw over, get a nice even pattern, conserve your water, just water what you really need. I should have been keeping a better eye on it. I think you're getting the idea. Let's go look at your irrigation controller. Wow, this is a pretty old controller, Vern. Um, but what, what I'm seeing here is it looks like you're set to water every station every day for 30 minutes. That's way too much water. Well, how do I know how to set it for each of my stations? By the way, what is a station? I don't see any trains around here. Uh, Vern, leave the humor to us. We'll deal with the jokes. A station is uh, one, of the, one of the areas on your time clock that controls one valve. So you have one valve out there that uh, turns on the lawn, another one that deals with the shrubs. Those are, those are what stations are. are. It's kind of techno talk. You know, it would be so great if we could take you back to where we're from mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, show you what a sustainable garden looks like with a high-tech irrigation system. That would be so cool. Let me see what I... Let me see if I can get... You. Okay, there's... Yeah. Try this one here. Ah! What in tarnation? Whoa. It worked. We were home. It worked. 
Hi, where are we? Fern, welcome to the future. Now that we're back in the present, you get an opportunity to see what a real sustainable garden looks like. Super, this looks great. You know, it's not just a beautiful garden, but it's also sustainable. Uh, we haven't used anything toxic here, sprayed anything in I don't know how long. Our water bill is probably the lowest in the whole neighborhood. And not only that, we don't spend a lot of time clipping and pruning and shearing stuff. Oh, there's Bob. He's a recent graduate from the Green Gardener program. Hi, Bob. I'm Vernon. You can call me Vern. Nice to meet Vern's you. Vern's a new friend of ours. We met him... Uh... Well, no, I don't. You wouldn't understand. But anyway, a really great guy, and uh, I think you guys should get to know each other. Yeah, why don't we leave you in Vern's hands for a little yeah, while? We're going to snoop around. Hang here. out a little bit. I'm here to do a little maintenance on the drip system. What's a drip system, Bob? The drip system is the is the most efficient way to put water on the plants, and only the amount of water on your plants that you need. Hmm. You water right to the root zone where you need the water. Good. Uh, for instance, we're going to do a little maintenance here. Here is a, this is a dripper, this puts just a couple of gallons of water right at the root zone. And you just leave it there and the water will come out when your timer comes on and water the root zone. Uh, what we have to do, since most of these timers are programmed to come on at night, we have to come in the daytime and do a test manually just to see how everything's working. And one of the first things we want to do is every couple months we want to clean out the filter, the white filter. And you just take this out and rinse it in the hose, put it back in, and that keeps your emitters from clogging. Well, that's simple enough. Uh-huh. And then what we do is we walk the whole zone with the system on, and we look for leaks in the emitters, missing emitters, or any kind of broke breaks or in the line. Ooh, that's a big gash there. Uh-huh. So what we're going to do is this missing emitter, there's not a plant there anymore. So we're just going to pop this in here and plug it. There it is. Now it's plugged. And as far as for repairing this, the easiest way is to just cut out the whole bad section here. And here. And snap these back together. It's a real simple part. Now that'll hold the pressure. No glue, nothing. Nothing, that's it. Billy said that you just graduated from the Green Gardener program. What is the Green Gardener program, Bob? Well, the Green Gardener program helps you become certified as a Green Gardener. Their class is put on by the city and several local water agencies. They're inexpensive and they're in English or Spanish. So anyone, home gardener or professional gardener, can become a green gardener and start having a sustainable garden. Well, I think I'm going to uh, just check out the rest of this drip line and see if there's any other problems with it. All righty. I've got lots of gardens to attend to, so I'll see you later. Nice okay. to meet you. Thanks for your help, Bob. Our local water providers have some really great tools to help you manage the water more effectively in your garden. For example, here's sbwater.org. They have a watering calculator that you can use by entering your zip code, the type of plants that you're watering, and the kind of irrigation system that you have, and it will tell you how much watering to do. Here's another neat feature. It's right on the home page. They call it the weekly watering index. Many controllers today have a knob or an adjustment where you can turn the watering up or down depending on the weather. So you simply match this percentage to the setting on your controller. Hey, Billy, it's 60% today. Roger that, Houston, 60% adjustment. We have contact. Uh, you ever been driving around, seeing somebody's sprinklers are on and it's a pouring rain? Sort of a silly thing to do. Well, there's technologies on certain time clocks that allow you to connect a rain sensor to the time clock. And as soon as it starts filling up with a little bit of rainwater, it knows to shut down the clock and completely override the program. Really great way to manage your water. There's one other technology. We call them smart controllers. What they do is they allow you to put in certain information about the kind of soil you have, the type of plants that you have, the root depth, and it sets up a program for you. It's even able to readjust itself based on the local weather conditions at any given time. So if you're shopping for a new clock, uh, investing in, in some of this new technology, fabulous thing to look out for, and it doesn't add too much money to your landscape. Hi, I'm Kathy Perret with your water meter report from Santa Barbara. If your water consumption's up on your bill and you think you have a leak, the first thing to do is check your water meter. Turn off everything in your house. Make sure the irrigation's off, the kids aren't playing in the tub, no one's taking a shower. Go out front, your water meter's out between the street and the sidewalk usually. Bring a big tool. I use this to lift the lid, get rid of the cobwebs, the creepy crawlies that are living underground. When you're looking at your meter, you're going to look for movement. There's a low flow indicator. 
This is it. It's a little triangle. It's red. It's black. It moves in response to the smallest amount of water. So if you have a leak and you see this moving, there's nothing going on in your house, that's the time to search through, take a look at everything, check your toilets especially. Those leak and you won't even hear them. If you need some more assistance and you'd like some more reference on that, go to sbwater.org. There's a lot of really good information on household plumbing, irrigation. It can help you. If it's bigger than you can handle, call your plumber. Although many associate Santa Barbara with its beaches and palm trees, in reality, our area is characterized as a chaparral. Santa Barbara can go months without rainfall, and so the native plants have been able to survive on such little water. Ironically, much of the water we use goes into our landscapes. However, it doesn't have to. By using native plants, plants that use little water, you can cut down on water use by up to 40%. To find a complete list of water-wise plants for help in the process, log on to www.sbwater.org. Not only are the plants of our area water efficient, they are aesthetically pleasing as well, something every local should take advantage of. Hey Vern, you getting that drip stuff down? Hey, I really want to thank you Garden Wise guys for teaching me how easy it is to have a sustainable landscape. No, well, no you're problem. welcome. Uh, Owen, I got yeah. a little tinkering to do with the time clock, oh, you know, yeah. time warp continuum. Yeah. Let me see if I understand this. A sustainable landscape. Now I don't have to have and do all that trimming and send all that good green waste to the dump. And, you know, I can get rid of that toxic arsenal that's in my garage and finally have me some room to park my pick em up truck. And I can reduce my water bill and keep the soil healthy at the same time. You got it. Ah, what a great outing I've had today. Thank you, Owen. You're welcome, Vern. Okay, this was at SETI. Okay, fine. Hey, Owen, I think I figured out how to send Vern back to uh, 1957. What does he mean, 1957? I was only six years old then. Six years old? What? Wait a minute, I don't understand. The radio, uh, your clothes, the, your gardening practices. Didn't we time travel? I mean, it even says in the script, it says send him back to, let me see here, back to 1957. Hey, Billy, we got a problem. Hold up a minute. Where? Burn, where'd you go? Burn, where'd you go? Billy, I don't think you should have hit that button. I don't know if we time traveled or what. Portrait of a sustainable landscape. A landscape that will last as long as human beings make the effort to choose the right plants, water efficiently, and care for their environment. See, excuse me, I, I'm sorry, I don't know who you are, but uh, we've got some work to do here, and so, you know, like garden tips, if you don't mind. Thank you. The three tips. Three tips. Well, I'll start off with this, Billy. Uh, pruning. Uh, one of the things you can do is go through your garden and analyze it for what you might call high maintenance hot spots, places where you're pruning too much, shearing, hacking away at things, and you're just working too hard. Use the pruning techniques that we've talked about in this show to make your life easier. Tip number two, if you do have some pest problems, always start with the most benign or non-toxic approach to the problem. In fact, if there's a plant that's always having problems, consider whether or not you could just live without that plant. Okay, tip number three, rethink your approach to irrigation. If you have a controller, learn how to use it and program it seasonally. And if you need a controller, think about getting one of the new smart controllers because they're so much more water efficient. Yep, mm -hmm. I think that's it. You know, this has been a great episode. Thank you for watching, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll see you next time. I was thinking if I got just the right settings on the time clock, maybe we could go back and see Hendrix live at Woodstock. If you want to contact the Garden Wise guys, you can submit a question to them at www.citytv18.com. But no matter what, you'll always be able to find them here in the sustainability zone.